Okay, today's mini lecture is about Bloom's Taxonomy of Intelligences, and this is um, a lecture that's going to talk about understanding what I like to call the ladder of human thinking processes. So, um, this is what we can also call meta thinking, thinking about thinking. So, it can be helpful when uh, you're learning anything new to kind of understand more deeply about the levels that we process information at um, and that's what this lecture is going to briefly cover. Okay, so first we should do a little bit of uh, context, a little bit of background about the um, professor who developed this system. So th who was Harold Bloom? Who was Bloom? So Bloom was a, Harold Bloom was a famous American professor. Um, he studied and analyzed literature. He was actually, um, for many, many years, he was a literary critic. Um, and he wrote uh, many, many articles that analyzed and talked about different famous books. Um, now, Bloom famously was supposed to have read everything influential um, in, in modern literature and in ancient literature, which we call um, the literary canon. So famously, if you want to go into the study of literature, you're supposed to read this huge list of um, hundreds and hundreds of books, you know, things by Shakespeare, things by like, for example, Herman Melville by uh, the book, the novel Moby Dick, the famous novel about uh, this crazy sea captain Ahab going on uh, this uh, crazy hunt for this mythical white whale, right? Um, he read them all, but not only that, he was, uh, he had such a sharp memory that suppose that um, he was supposed to be able to, um, if he was walking across the campus of his university, the students could call out uh, the line of a famous poem, and he would be able to pick up the poem from that point and carry on as he was walking across the uh, the opened area. So he had a, an amazing memory, um, and was uh, he did not suffer fools gladly. We can say he was not the easiest uh, fellow to get along with, but he was a genius, okay? Um, and it's really important for us to look at these uh, powerful intelligent humans who have developed this uh, excellent thinking system um, and, and, and try to, if we can, take some wisdom from them, right? We've already learned about uh, Socrates in one of our readings and Bloom is another one of these, you know, power thinkers that it's, it's important to know about uh, people like Harold Bloom. Um, so as I kind of already mentioned, one of his biggest uh, the, one of the things he's best known for was that he developed innovative ways of thinking about thinking. So we can also call this meta thinking, right? Um, uh, Bloom, N dot D dot stated, reading well is one of the greatest pleasures that solitude can afford you. So this is also a chance for me to very briefly start to introduce the um, citation system that we're going to use if we want to borrow an idea for someone else. So if you're borrowing an idea from another uh, person, a writer or uh, a teacher or even a friend, um, we don't steal the idea. We don't, we, don't, we don't take the idea as our own, right? That would be plagiarism. But what we can do is we can very clearly state where we got the idea from. So when you want to use APA um, citations, now a citation basically means you're giving credit to the original person who came up with that idea. The first thing we write is there, especially for what we see here, this is a direct quote, right? We're pulling the exact idea word for word, um, usually from the internet. Um, but in this case, you need to put the author's name first. Uh, so, and it's always going to be their family name, their last name. You don't need to include their first name. The family name is enough. So I've got Bloom here at the beginning. And then you can see in brackets, I've used this um, code, n dot d dot. And that basically means I don't know the date of when he said this, so that it means no date. But you still have to put a placeholder in there to show that you're following the APA system. So when you use APA to create a citation, you have the author's name, then the date in brackets, then you have a signal verb and it's always going to be in the past tense, right? ED at the end there, stated. Then you have a comma and then you start your, your, your direct quote with quotation marks. You have quotation marks at the beginning and at the end. And uh, there you go, you've got a wonderful um, 
correctly created, we call this a direct quote. Um, so we're borrowing this idea from Bloom, the idea that reading well is one of the great pleasures that solitude can afford you. And he famously did read all the time. He consumed books and he had a, a steel trap of a memory for being able to remember the content of those books as well. I'm a little bit jealous of him. Okay, so the other kind of important point here is that Bloom taught at Yale University for 60 years. Um, now, he passed away in 2019, which is a little bit sad, but he's left us behind some really interesting um, concepts. So let's move on to his taxonomy of intelligences now. So Bloom's taxonomy of intelligences is essentially uh, a, a ladder of, of the different levels of complexity of how we think about things. So starting at the very bottom down here, level one is understanding. So just do you understand something? Do you, do you, can you see it? Can you recognize it? Do you know it? Number, level two is comprehension. So not just can you see and identify, but do you kind of understand the um, background information? Do you understand where it comes from? Do you comprehend the origin and the definition and things like this? Level three is what we call applying the knowledge. So um, you go from being able to recognize it to understanding the parts of it to being able to use it to do something. Level four is analyzing. So now you're kind of comparing it to other things. You're trying to see how it fits into a larger um, scope of, of, of knowledge. Level five is evaluating. So then you're, you know, so as we move up the ladder here, we can see that these thinking processes begin to get more difficult. Um, and level six is synthesizing and creating. So so this is where you know you don't just understand it you don't just understand the parts you can use it for something you're comparing it you're evaluating it and then can you create something completely new can you take the old knowledge and marry it with something that you're thinking um, to to synthesize and create um, and I've, I've included a hyperlink here which is um, I think a good idea which shows you where I got the uh, basic ladder from. And if you wanted to look um, at something in a little bit more depth, you can go here to this, this Merritt College webpage, which is uh, a small university in Oakland. And you can see that they're giving a little bit more uh, in-depth information um, about what each one of these uh, steps really means. And in my presentation, I've put them in the verb form. Um, but over here on the website, we've got them in noun form. So you can see again how English words are quite flexible and they can easily go from, we can, we can, we can transform them from one form to another form. And that's uh, something that you should become comfortable doing.